music on. Hang on. Oh, look at you. you. Look fantastic. You sound great. Hey. You look better. Welcome, welcome, Dr. Bart Rademacher, prescription for your transformation. Hashtag real people, hashtag old conversations. And today's uh, Monday, first day of the week, first day of the series of uh, interviews that uh, I'm excited to bring to you uh, this entire week. And we have some very cool things uh, set up. But have you ever noticed that when you enter a room or a space and suddenly there's this amazing light that you get to notice? And it's that light that kind of draws you to this individual that appears to be incredibly unique and special. And you're just you know, automatically drawn to that person. And so whenever that happens, it really serves you to go ahead and, and meet that person and find out what's true about them and what they're all about. Because when you do that, then you're ready to get an amazing gift, an amazing gift in your life. And there's some people in this world that just have that intuition, just have that presence to think, see things in a different light. And today is a very great example of that. And I really want to welcome Ariana Joy for joining me on this amazing platform and you, of course, being that amazing person that should be on this platform talking about your journey and all the gifts that you have for all of us. Oh, thank you, Bart, for that beautiful introduction. I think I'm blushing a little bit. <laughs> I can see, I can tell. So tell us a little bit about this idea of, um, you know, you've got this amazing website, which is orianajoy.com. And, and you're blogging about you're never not on your path. I'm really curious about what, what's that about and what's your perspective on that? Yeah, well, that's one of the blogs that I wrote a while back, and I've got a, a good ton of other written blogs and video blogs. But the inspiration for that one is, you know, a lot of times we feel like we've fallen off of our path. We feel lost, we feel confused, we feel uninspired, and we're like, where am I going? What am I doing? Why am I here? And how did I even get here? And I hear it from my clients all the time. I feel like I've lost my path. I feel like I'm so disconnected from my mission, from my purpose. And so I wrote that blog to remind people that we are never not on our path because our pains and our seeming you know, mess ups and screw ups and challenges in life are really guiding us towards our mission and our purpose. So when we begin to see our challenges in that light, we begin to use those challenges as guideposts for where to go and what to share with people. So that was the inspiration for that blog. Interesting, interesting. And, and also from that, from your, your, your way, I guess, of, of appreciating life in, in an ultra sensitive way, I think, that allows you to be even more exposed to what's around. And that's given you a lot of wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. And we all have that potential, right? That exists within all of us. I'm not special in that way. I've just tapped into something that's available for all of us to, to access and to, uh, to use to our advantage. But interesting enough, a lot of us are just simply unaware of that. And I guess you read a book at one point and suddenly your life changed. What happened there? Yeah. When I was 19, I was in that place. I was confused. I was lost. I was in college going for a degree that didn't really feel very inspiring. I felt really sick in my body. I was just getting involved in relationships that weren't serving me. Um, and I read a book called The Celestine Prophecy. And this book introduced me to the idea of the, the concept of intuition and how we can use it to further our path and to catalyze our journey into remembering who we really are and why we're really here. And that book radically transformed my life. It opened up so many different doorways. I started to view the world in a completely different way. And again, this, this way of interacting with life, relating to life itself is available for all of us. It doesn't have to be this, you know, sometimes I, I live in New York City and as I look out my window, I'm thinking about going out this afternoon and some of the people I'm going to be seeing, the energy of the city is so heavy and so dense and everybody's walking around as though they're carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders. And it just feels like they're just drudging through the muck, you know, like it's not easy. Everything's hard. Everything sucks. And they're blaming this person and that person and the Democrats and the Republicans, everybody's wrong. And it's like, well, wait, when we realize that there's this force that we can tap into that will guide us and that will show us the way through, the human experience becomes completely different. 
And so, so why is it that some people like yourself are naturally drawn to that or aware of that? And, and some people aren't, I mean, you know, what, what's, what's the, the, the key what, to opening that door? Hmm. I mean, I could definitely go down the rabbit hole <laughs> with that uh -huh. question. Karma, past lives, you know, karmic contracts, what we choose to incarnate with. But beyond that, really, it's a choice is really what it is. We have to choose to elevate beyond the problems and choose to navigate through the world in a way that says there is a solution to every problem. And instead of focusing on the problem, I'm going to focus on finding the solution. And I'm going to put every ounce of energy and attention into finding that solution because it takes the same energy, right? If we're going to focus on the problem, like it's still draining us. So we may as well use our energy in a way that's going to stimulate us into something more fulfilling, something more um, nourishing, something more enriching for not just ourselves, but for the entire world. But don't you think people are sometimes really scared, really scared to take that step and scared to find out something that they may have been hiding? And, you know, I can think of it this way because, you know, all of us undergo one form of trauma or another. And I think the way that our brain oftentimes will handle that is by by masking it, by burying it. And, and you know, a trauma can be as intense, even though it may seem very insignificant. I mean, even a, a little baby who wasn't fed for a couple of hours, that may be perceived as death, for example, and um, let alone, you know, other kinds of traumas that can be really intense. So I can imagine that sometimes people are just scared to make that leap. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Fear is a real thing. And my perspective on fear isn't that it needs to be dominated. And, you know, it's not so much about being fearless as it is embracing fear. It's like feeling the fear and, and doing it anyways. That's what courage is. Um, having courage means you, you feel the fear, you experience the resistance and you reclaim your personal power by choosing to push through it anyways. And this doesn't necessarily mean that it's always easy and fun and light, you know, it can be challenging. And what I've found personally and what I see with my clients is the temporary discomfort of peeling away and moving through those traumas is it can it can heighten the experience of the trauma or the the energy that has been trapped for a while, but ultimately you become free of that. Mm -hmm. So it might intensify as things rise up to the surface. You might get more scared. You might be more afraid for a moment. And then when you embrace that fear and say, you know what? I see you. I witness you. I understand. Or maybe I don't completely understand the underlying core of that, but I know that there is a core of it. And I'm going to choose to reclaim my radiance and you know, embody my brilliance in this moment by moving through it. And one thing, obviously, that, that you deliver, which is wonderful, is that, you know, you don't have to do it on your own. You know, having that, it's not necessarily a support group, but it's that, that tribe that you create where people get to join in, like-minded, if you will, who are looking and seeking to embrace, you know, their radiance and, and their brilliance as well. Just like my platform is all about tap into your authentic genius you know, result and, and, and really live the life that you desire. And as I like to put on this platform is really you tap into that collective wisdom and working together in a generative collaborative way. Mm. And so too often we're thinking, I got to do this on my own. And I'm the only one with these terrible problems or traumas. Well, the truth is so different you know, when you, when you meet people and, and hear their stories and I've been a, a performance strategist or life coach for quite some time now. And, um, you know, we are not alone. And so one of the things your company, your, your, your program is you are uh, what's called a um, intuitive success coach. I love that term. I wish I had thought of that one. Well, I thank you. <laughs> so it is about success. It's about how, and, and how do you go about in, in with your clients? You have a special part that's kind of unique and i know that you're much more into spiritual growth and practical spirituality you know share with the, the listeners you know what's what's really special about you because i mean the, listening to you right now there's a special radiance and and you know that's a gift that you get to give you know other people already and so 
but so people understand, you know, the, the workings of what you do, you know, what, what could they expect? No, oh, you're making me blush again. Um, yes. Well, first off, yes, we are not in this alone, right? We're not an island. And it's this um, kind of dichotomy of only we can walk our path. No one else can do it for us. Even if we hire the best coaches or therapists or have the most amazing partner or, you know, it doesn't matter. We are the ones who have to go through our process and we're the only ones that can do that. And at the same time, we can't do that alone. We need support. We're not an island and we're not isolated. And when we do isolate ourselves, the burdens become bigger. And it's not about throwing our burdens on other people, but, you know, letting someone help you and support you in, in your journey. So what I do with my clients is, you know, I help people integrate the spiritual journey in a practical and grounded way. And that manifests differently in everybody, just like the traumas manifest differently in everybody. But the human condition is still the same. We still feel lonely. We still feel like we're not enough. We, we, you know, we all feel like we don't have the resources, whether they're inner or outer resources at times. Um, and how that manifests in our world will look differently for each one of us. Um, but oftentimes the way through that is very similar. It's all about reclaiming our personal power. And a lot of people nowadays are turning to spirituality or, um, you know, some people call it awakening or expanding consciousness, whatever you want to call it. Um, I call it spirituality. I know that can be a loaded word for some people. So people watching can pick whatever they want, but basically awakening to the truth beyond what the world has told us we are. And people are turning to that and they're learning about their chakras and they're studying plant medicines and, you know, they're meditating and they're, they're oming and they're spending time in nature and they're stepping away from technology and stepping, stepping away from things that are draining their life force and draining their vibe. And they are finding themselves oftentimes, and I found myself here, and this is why I feel so passionate about supporting people. It, I was in such this, this, place of contrast. Like I'm awakening to something massive, something huge. And I don't know how to integrate it into this world that is still so far behind what I now know to be true. So how do we take what we know to be true, what we're awakening to, what we're tapping into, what we're remembering really more than anything. And how do we integrate that into our lives when our family, our loved ones, our bosses, our employees, they still don't understand. And how do we not create more of a divide? How do we make it not us and them, the awakened and the unawakened, the people who are still sleeping, the people who don't understand, and you know, the people of my tribe, I just want to have women's circles and medicine circles. And you know, I want to just be with people who understand. And that's beautiful. And what's the point of that if we're not bringing everybody along with us? So it's a long way to say I support my clients in understanding how to integrate what they're learning in a way that is sustainable for all of us. That, that's very beautifully put. And, uh, you know, the truth is this, is that, you know, uh, some people would think that we're a product of our environment. And that's not exactly true, but, you know, the environment has a strong influence on us. But what's also true is that when you can create an environment that's more conducive and supportive of, of who you are, your identity, your beliefs, your values, then it's a lot easier to, to be that way. And, you know, all these people who go on these, you know, personal development, you know, seminars and events, and, and I know you've got a couple of great ones coming up as well. And what's interesting is that it almost seems so natural and easy to be in that environment and to be everything that you want to be. And then you go back home mm -hmm. and then it's a problem. And so you're right. It's about, you know, how do we get to integrate, you know, all of this, you know, with the world around us? And one thing that I, I personally, you know, if anybody's listening to this and, and wants to have that answer, how do you manage that if, if the environment is not supportive? It's just being curious about where they're at. It makes sense that they're doing what they're doing. And it's, you're coming from a place of no judgment. And so we're all on our path. And, and if we have that disturbance within us, 
then it, that also makes sense. And I can't tell you how many arrows I have in my back coming from the medical you know, field and then being just a life coach. You know, many doctors think, well, that's nuts. That's crazy. I mean, you know, why are you actually doing that? But the answers are there. And what's beautiful is that, especially with this platform, especially with things like you can bring to, you know, to people, is that they can now discover what they don't know. They can discover what they don't know through meeting people like yourself, you know, helping them intuitively too. And what I like about the whole intuition thing and what you said about, you know, spirituality, you know, I like to look at the three intelligences that we have. It's the brain intelligence, it's the body intelligence, and then finally, it's the energy intelligence. And so if you're unfamiliar or uncomfortable with the word spirituality, I'm not talking about you, but others, mm -hmm. you know, everything's made of energy. And again, what I, I think is so amazing about you is that you're able to connect all the dots from that spiritual side, the energy side, and how to make it practical in people's lives. Well, thanks. Yeah, it's it's so important. It's so important to uh, to be able to connect all of those dots because again, what a lot of the spiritual path, the energy paths are teaching us is that we're all one and it's all one. It's all interconnected. And so long as we're isolating and making one better than another or one more important than another, you know, if the body is more important than the mind or than the energy, then we're keeping that illusion of separation uh, strong. And that's what I've discovered through the process of awakening does is it helps to tear down that veil of illusion that keeps us separate from ourselves, from different parts of ourselves, from other people, from the world around us. And our intuition is what guides us. And that's ultimately what I, what I do with my clients is help them remember that they really actually know, <laughs> right? Yeah, we all have the answers within us. Yeah, I, I think there's a, a, an absolute brilliance within all of us and we're just not aware of that. And we have all these rules and regulations and masks and fears that stop us. And in fact, I just put a quote um, from Marion Williamson on my page today is that, you know, it's not so much, uh, was it we fear, you know, what we can be, I forget exactly. Our know. greatest fear is not that we are inadequate, it's that we are powerful beyond measure. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. So um, I just posted it and I, I can't recite you. Yeah. Our deepest fear, is that we that not that we are inadequate our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure it is our light not our darkness that most frightens us we ask ourselves who am i to be brilliant gorgeous talented fabulous actually who are you not to be yeah it's pretty amazing how easy it is to forget that how easy you know we live in, in a world that's negative that's critical that's can't do this you can't be this you can't believe that and there's a wonderful story about Thomas Edison, and we may be familiar with that. When he was in school, he was sent home, you know, with a letter from the teacher, and I gave it to his mom. And then he asked, you know, his mom, you know, what did the teacher say? He says, you know, son, you're so incredibly smart. You're such a brilliant boy, you know, that the school just can't, you know, uh, work and teach you at your level, and you need to go home and, and be taught at home. And only to find out, you know, years and years later, uh, after I believe his mother had died, that he found this letter. And what the, act what the letter actually said was, we, we're sorry, but we have to send your, your son home because he is just not smart enough to do the classwork. And we are not able to provide this child with, with the special needs that he has. So it's interesting how that happens. And what I love about what you're doing is you're just unlocking the reality of our life in areas that we're just really unfamiliar with and areas that we're being told we shouldn't go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most of us are living a life that isn't ours. We're living a life that's designed by someone else. We're living by someone else's rules, someone else's playbook. You know, this is what's allowed. This is what's not allowed. You know, this is who you are, right? And imagine if uh, Thomas Edison had been, you know, had been told that he was stupid, that he wasn't enough, that he wasn't up to par. And how many of us hear that at different points in our lives and that becomes our story. 
that becomes the tape that plays in our head that says, this is who I am. This is how I am in the world. And this is just me. And there's nothing I can do about it. And once we start to break down those stories and when we realize that most of the stories that we carry around aren't ours, there's something that someone said to us on the playground or something a teacher said to us or something our parents said to us or something our older sibling said to us, you know, the moment that I realized that one of the big stories that I was carrying around with me was actually something my brother used to say to me, I was like, oh, wait, that's not mine. That's not my truth. That's just what an older brother was saying to an annoying younger sister. But I carried that around with me for so long. And once I realized that and chose to break free of it. Oh man, so liberating. That's awesome. And what I like about what you can do and, and when people trust intuition and because you're that intuitive, you can actually validate you know, just by expressing to people what you can see, what they can't. And, and oftentimes as a great coach is, is two things I believe that <clears throat> they love the person more than they love themselves and that they can see the greatness when they can't see themselves. Yeah. And so I understand you have some workshops coming up in March. Yeah, yeah, I've got a couple things. I've got a webinar coming up soon, a group mastermind program. Um, I'm going to Peru in March and facilitating a women's plant medicine retreat. And I have another retreat in June scheduled for spiritual entrepreneurs, um, a self-care retreat. So we'll be posting some more information about that soon. And when's the one in June? Do you have dates specifically for that? I think it's June 11th to 17th, I believe. It's outside of Boulder, Colorado. Okay, yeah. well, I might, I might have to sign myself up on that one <laughs> if I'm free to come because I'm doing a lot of work in the Bahamas with, with the stem cells. Yeah, so, totally. It'd be perfect for you. <laughs> yeah, I love this, this kind of stuff. And so if anybody wants to find you, how do they find you? So they can go to my website, arianajoy.com, A-U-R-I-A-N-N-A, joy.com. I have a YouTube channel. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Everything's Ariana Joy. You can just type it in and find me. Love it, love it, love it. So I want to thank you for today. Um, it, like I said, you're an amazing human being. It's, it's all about, you know, that human experience that you get to explore, that you get to discover, that you get to manifest in all of your, your brilliance. And um, if, if you were to say a few words of inspiration or motivation or insights, um, what would you like to say to wrap us up today? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me. This has been fun. And um, for the people who are watching, you know, wherever you are, remember that the stories that you're telling yourself are what create your reality. So whatever success looks like for you, however that manifests or you want it to manifest in your life, um, you create your own rules and the thoughts that you think will help you to manifest that reality, that success into existence. So be diligent with your thoughts, guard your thoughts. They are your greatest gift and um, they can also be your biggest block. So yeah, make friends with your thoughts and uh, use them use them to help better the world because we need it it's not about just success in our own lives and personal success it's about we're all in this together like let's let's figure this out you know love it love it you know radically transform so you can help uh, change the world and you know like ariana is saying you know you're in charge of your brain you're in charge of your thoughts you're in charge of your actions and your choices and finding people like ariana to help you along that path you don't have to do it on your own. And she is a wonderful, wonderful gift. So once again, Ariana, thank you so much. I am Dr. Bart Rademacher, prescription for your transformation, hashtag real people, hashtag real conversations. And I'll be back uh, tomorrow. And who I'm going to invite, I'm, in fact, I'm inviting you right now to let's have another one of these. And let's see if we can bring some more people, more, more you know, conversations about all the wonderful things that we all can do together and support each other. Absolutely. I'm in. Count me in.